what's up everybody sky spider here um figured i'd do a little rehousing on camera today this is one i've been absolutely dreading uh this is my cobalt blue and yeah they are a bitch and a half to rehouse and uh have the dubious distinction of being the cause of the most bites in the hobby because inexperienced keepers get them because they're they're blue and then try to handle them. And yeah, you can see where that goes. So let's see how safely we can get this done today. So I've got one of my regular shoebox builds. You can see I've got very, very tiny air holes drilled. I'm trying to get these on camera here. So yeah, holes small enough that it's not going to have any risk of getting out. Last thing we would need here. So this is a burrowing spider. It's also a humidity dependent spider, so I've got some moist sphagnum I'm going to start with here. We're just going to do a real thin bottom layer. It's going to be a quick tutorial on uh, how I set up my burrowers so I can still see them. I used to be very anti-burrowing tarantula because I hate having a pet I never get to look at. And then with a little trial, trial and error over the years, came up with a setup that really works where the spiders are still comfortable and not stressed out and I've got a good opportunity to see them. Okay, so there we go. Nice thin layer of moist sphagnum. I'm probably going to have to uh, water down the substrate. This is my normal substrate mix. It's been sitting for a while so it's really dry. It is uh, a mix of ripped soil, orchid bark, potting soil, and a little bit of sphagnum in, in this as well. So just to keep it from all sticking to my hands since it's so dry, I'm going to even that out. So yeah, that's our second step right there. And then since this is so dry, Go ahead and just mist it all down. That'll take a little while to soak in just because dry substrate just doesn't like water for a little bit. Makes it a little hydro, uh, hydrophobic. So there's the basics. Now we just need two more important ingredients as well as some decorative ones. First thing is a good old piece of cork bark. Get one with a little curve on the inside, so they've got a nice little burrow shape to it. And then I'm going to put it down on one side. I'm leaving a gap in the back because they like to have an exit to their burrow in the back. But this will give it the perfect starter burrow. I'm going to try and introduce it right over here so it'll run straight in. And then once the spider is all set up in here and comfortable, actually I can even do this a little different here. see if I can set this up the way I like to. I really like to have them put up on the walls. Yeah, this piece isn't good for this. So yeah, once the spider gets settled, let's put it back turned this way, since this ends a little higher. Once the spider's all comfortable, this whole thing's going to get webbed out, and it's going to extend its burrow to the outside of this, kind of like a, a loft bed kind of situation. This is going to get webbed over. Um, all these free, free open areas will be webbed over and the sides of the walls will be webbed. So this is going to be one giant burrow for the spider. That way when I open this, it's not going to dash back under the log. It's going to stay fairly out in the open. Though I expect with this one it'll be like Usum Barrows where I'm going to get a lot of threat postures. And then the other absolutely essential ingredient, water dish. And I like a good sized water dish when I'm doing a uh, more tropical species like this. Just noticed I've got a lot of dirt on that wall. Let's wash that off. But yeah, tropical species, give them a big water dish. Healthy spider can definitely swim. And then let's see if I have anything floating to put in there. Yes. 
I got this little bag of skulls as decorations. It's like, I think a hundred of these for 10 bucks. Guess what? They float in water dishes. Perfect way to keep feeders from drowning themselves. And it looks cool. So there's all our basics for how I want to set this up. Let's see if I've got anything to make the decorations look a little nicer. With a burrowing spider like this, you don't really need to do much. Because whatever you do is just going to get covered by wet. That said, I really like the look of leaf litter. I think it really adds to an enclosure. Plus, I think I'm going to put a couple of isopods in here as a cleanup crew. So that'll give them uh, their own hides. That said, whether I add isopods or not, I'm going to need some springtails. So I'm going to put a little extra water in these. And just pour some in. Man, if only transferring the spider was that easy. So now we got a good group of uh, starting springtails. Let me dig out some powder white isopods. These are the ghost isopods, as I like to call them anyway. We've got a couple on here. Let's just give it a quick tap. Three or four went in. It's perfect. Spider will probably eat one of them. Because they're still in the size range where that's a thing. But as you can see, we got a couple running around. Gives them a minute to get settled before I start reaching for the spider. Now, important thing when moving a spider like this. I have two different shapes set of clamps for different types of poking I might need to do. Got a paintbrush, because you can't go wrong to have a paintbrush. And... I've got two different size catch cups. You can tell I'm, I make sure they don't ever get used for anything else. These are my catch cups, specifically. Yes, I'm this anal. Comes with the OCD. And because I'm rehousing something bolty, we've got the lid handy. I don't want to have to be looking for that if uh, the spider goes in and then tries to bolt out. So we've got all of that set up. I just need to get the spider ready. Okay, so I ordered this spider from Fear Not quite a while back as a little baby. And I accidentally ordered it with one of their enclosures. So it's been in this since it was little. And yeah, the last molt, it's uh, getting pretty good size. I probably have a male just because it's growing so damn fast. But now I have to excavate it from this, which is going to be a big thing. Want to make sure I have nothing in the immediate area. So if the spider goes all bolty, I can find it. One catch cup right next to me. The other one right at my arm's reach. It tends to be my instinctual grab distance. So yeah, let's open this up and see how bad this is going to be. There may be cursing. You have been warned. Not that it's anything new. So I'm going to start by just pulling decorations out one at a time. Little pieces of cork bark. And I immediately drop one into my bag of sand. Okay. I like this little leaf. I'm going to save this. Because I'm weird. There, we have a leaf. Big old chunk of webbed up soil. Oop, I think I got another leaf. Make sure I'm not going to grab onto it and have a little spider on the bottom. Always making sure I know what I'm looking at. Check both sides of everything. Spider's almost certainly just down here in the web. And I'm definitely going to have to vacuum after this. The joy of moving burrowers, right? I 
Now bear in mind, I haven't seen the spider in about a month. So I have no idea how much bigger it is or what it looks like. So we're going to find out together. Okay, so I got pretty good access to the opening of the burrow now. I'm going to take a flashlight and look along the sides. See if I can see any legs in here. So a little bit of open access to the burrow along the bottom. So not much anymore. But I think I see it. So the spider is right about here. Hmm. Debating how I want to do this. I think that might be my best move. And I'm actually going to go in with these straight tweezers and poke straight down. See if maybe I can get lucky. I think I saw some legs. You guys may have noticed I definitely prefer the, uh, the curved tweezers. Give me a little more flexibility when my wrist doesn't have any. Yeah, the spiral goes all the way around the outside here. I'm now hearing that Eminem song in my head. About two trailer park girls go around the outside. I see you. I see you. Are you going to be a nightmare or are you going to be nice? I got a beautiful new home for you, cutie. Come on up. Come up. I'm predicting nightmare. Can we go into the new container? Whoop the butt. We go slow. Nope. We Don't go slow. Whew. And that is why we keep catch cups nearby. Whoop. Okay, we're in the new container. It looks like we are sitting calmly for the moment. Let's pop this off the stand and go in for a closer look. There we go. That's my little cobalt blue baby. Someone's growing up. So yeah, this thing can probably live out the rest of its life in this nice new enclosure. And I hope it's a very, very happy little scooter. I can't wait for the angry threat postures. So yeah, piece of cake rehouse. Even though it totally bolted and made it about a good six feet across the room. But because I knew that was a possibility, I was ready for it. Oh, what is that isopod doing? It is tempting fate. Better be glad that spider is not hungry right now. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get a lid on this before it becomes a problem. And yeah, that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed. So we've got all of that set up. I just need to get the spider ready. And then we can get moved on in. Now where the fuck did I put the spider? 